if you never did the work to develop the muscle underneath and then you lose uh, and drop fat percentage, it won't help you. You just look skinny, right? But if you did the work to build muscle and everybody's different, I know my, my ectomorphics are not happy right now, but like, I'm always looking skinny. I'm like, I know, but you're ectomorphic. So we got to do something different. But like, I'm saying in general, like other, other kind of groups is like, you have to build your muscle before dropping all the fat. And that's why you're not going to go this extreme all at once. If you have a really good coach or program, they're not going to go like extreme like you on this. This is like later and dialed in. Um, but first, let's work those hard programs. Let's get your legs sore, right, Paula? Get those legs really sore. Or Lisa, let's make sure you can hit, try those pull-ups, no matter how much you're struggling at the bottom for those pull-ups, Lisa, you know, Let's work on building that muscle. And then once you can dial it back and strip that down, then you can really, really see some musculature. So you do need a good base foundation for building. You need to build muscle on, uh, underneath. And then um, eventually you can really dial your macros to come in. But if you were not on macros to begin with, it's hard to dial you back. It's it's like, you. it's not impossible. I mean, I've known people who've, you know, but they weren't like too much fat on their body. Like they were kind of okay where they could lure macros within a certain period of time and then go compete. But yeah, you, you want to have a good base first and then dial that macro in. The thing is in terms of macros, um, at certain levels, you'll need um, higher amounts and pairing. When you're at base, uh, protein, carbs, and fat, I'm gonna talk about them all equally uh, because they're all really, really important. And then during certain phasings, and you can call them load phases and deloading phases. But yeah, so there's there's different phasings that you do. Um, and at certain times, you're gonna have certain macros that matter more importantly than other macros. But when you're first new to macros, you want a healthy base of understanding and including all macros involved so you have the most balanced nutrition as possible. And then as you reach higher levels, then you need someone who really knows how to dial your macros. At the higher levels in your um, shredding, that's the word I was looking at, shredding phase. Yeah, shredding phase. For your shredding phase, um, as, as Oshone knows, um, you will start to change it more rapidly. I will start changing macros more rapidly. There's a lot of dialing. I think Oshone, we were dialing from week to week or every two weeks as you got closer to competition. It was dialing rapidly. There's a lot that happens in order to produce the physique. Now, this is quite complex. I know not everybody is trying to compete. I'm just saying like, you know, if you're wanting to have at least looking some like like really good decent muscle you probably should understand a bit of macros so when there is the ability to dial you can dial your macros and then you can pair different ones together to produce different results whether you pair carbs and fat carbs and protein um you know and or fat and carbs they have all different effects in your body there's there's pairings that you can do which again you're not gonna really um you're not going to really need to understand the reasoning behind a lot of this because it's so complex is like if you work with a coach which you know some people like um even on here they compete i know i think rosalind competes and uh, laura oki com competes and they have local competitive coaches Ho hopefully most likely your competitive coach is considering a lot of these things they they understand that there has to be certain things that has to happen in regards to the phasing or shredding phases or different things like that so when I teach nutrition um, from a standpoint of sculpting, bodybuilding, but not needing to compete, you guys already heard me say this. I approach it from three standpoints to make sure it's um, lifestyle based in a way, but also like matches your age group, which is all mostly in menopause. So it's number one quality of food, as you guys have heard me say. So I really have to address that like inflammation factor because most of the menopause women have issues with inflammation which is tied to your hormone changes and as well as your nutrition. So I have to address quality of food quite strictly that maybe a 25 year old, uh, you know, <laughs> young Oshone may not have to address or something like that. Right. Like, so, uh, you know, so it's like, it is something that we're, I would have to dress more with an older population and even less with my gut, the guys I'm training right now, like they just, they just doesn't apply to them right now, but yes, quality of food, 
quantity of food, so number of calories as well as macros because of the dialing process that has to happen. And a lot of like, if you're doing lifestyle, I just won't be dialing you as much because you don't need to, you don't have a goal to want to step on stage. Do you know what I mean? So, so like it, it's like, it depends on what you're telling me your goals are, what you're into, like your, your future coach, if Oshone is your coach or Viate is your coach or whatever. Um, so there's that. And then, um, what, what else? Oh, qu quality, quantity, and timing. And so timing of food is, uh, like not totally important when you first begin but as you go more into it and I know again one of my clients here that we were talking I am a little bit more on her what she makes sure before the bed and before she hits the bed and also like where she's distributing her macros but she's an MA and she's already like I already know her body type I understand what she's struggling with in her metabolism right now so I will go more specific on timing at the beginning though we need to first address quality if you you don't really know your food and all of that we address that quantity and start teaching you caloric and macros and then eventually the timing at higher levels this type of dialing timing is so crucial i would say if you were to ever compete and i know a lot of you who are on competition i know you know this it's by the hour by the hour yeah you are dialed on every single minute of the day now a lot of people don't want to live like that i'm not saying that's lifestyle i'm saying that's competitive okay you may never want to step on stage but if you want to step on stage you gotta have someone who understands this type of hour by hour situation as you close in on competition actually um Rosalinda, you competed back a long time ago, right? Isn't that correct? And Rosalinda has a goal. Everybody cheer her on to compete at and stage at 65. And I'm like, yes, you go, girl. I'm going to get you there. So she's super awesome. And so she kind of understands um, if she's done this before, she understands what I'm saying a little bit about timing is very crucial. Timing's more crucial the leaner you get and the more sculpted you want to get. If, if you're not there, you're just more lifestyle, you do need to know timing, but to a lesser intense degree, okay? Macros are just a, a complex topic that you, it's kind of like a body. Okay, like, so what I said earlier to Anna, Anna, Anna is there's certain like baseline um, knowledge about how, uh, you know, mesomorphic, endomorphic, fast twitch, slow twitch, which is certain studies and research studies done, but how you actually tweak and dial has to do partially with experience. You really don't have fully write a book in it. You can, but again, it's not black and white because you have to have somebody who has done it over and over again, has done it for multiple people's bodies and understand multiple body types and can understand that to then teach you how to actually dial macros. Now, uh, again, if your goal, um, who, um, who just asked that Gwen is not high, like super high level, it's not like it, it needs to be so crazy complex. We can go with some general principles and a lot of my FFF transformation clients and some MAs who don't have goals of competing are also happy with just like baseline health and wellness and looking leaner and dropping the belly and dropping inflammation and looking stronger and more toned are really are really happy with that. Uh, so you don't have to go crazy on it. I'm just explaining uh, if you wanted to take it to that level, the, the level of pre precision that you need, right? I guess for all of anyone that's listening here for you, if you feel like you want to be better uh, coached in understanding macros, I want you to put macros below. If you want to have a better understanding of macros, put macros below. For my existing clients, anyone in FFF and, uh, you know, MA, I know you guys want to keep learning more about macros, but you're learning it. So don't worry. Those are coming in your progression of your curriculum. Okay. So, um, but yeah, if you are outside of that and you are like, oh, I really need to understand macros more. I want to be coached in that, then drop macros. And like I said, for me, uh, because I like training more lifestyle um, overall, I love competition too, but because I know it takes a different level and, and whatnot. Um, so for me, I address more quanti uh, sorry, quality of food, quantity of food, and timing of food in that kind of lifestyle way for most of my clients. Unless my client says I want to take it to a competitive level, then uh, Joanne knows 
Joanne knows I was more on her. <laughs> Joanne, are you on here? <laughs> she was like, oh, I didn't know that you start getting more strict. I was like, well, well you want to compete. I mean, I am going to be dialing your macros much more intensely, right? So, but yeah, most of, most of the time, if you're telling me lifestyle, we're going to work on those general lifestyle macro factors, like general quality, quantity, and timing of food. I'm seeing laughter come in. That's <laughs> so funny.